Hi, this is Keith again from Keith Trim Dragon Art, and I'm out making another video in my garage because according to YouTube, you're more likely to follow me and subscribe to me if you get to know me. So, uh, we're gonna start off by um, showing a couple, couple more of my paintings here. Recently, I had a little art show in Beatrice, Nebraska, Main Street, Beatrice. This painting of a frog with fangs was up in the window uh, at an abandoned building for like three months. And I just got it back, this painting back um, uh, two days ago. But uh, it's a tree frog. Uh, it's very popular amongst my, my fan club because people like frogs. So it's acrylic. It's on a, a board that I got from Goodwill. Put that over here. Next one I have is uh, my wife calls this battle chicken. I do a lot of cartoony stuff. And this is one of the very first ones I started uh, two years ago when I got back into doing art after a 20 year hiatus. Uh, it was just a cartoon. Um, I was experimenting. Um, it's not really a chicken, but um, she calls it battle chicken. It was hanging in her bedroom for a short time, but that one also went on display for about three months in Beatrice. And this one here is really kind of cool. Uh, I call it my Mayan bird because I was in a, my Mayan period at the time and I found this bird on Google and I said, what would it look like if I took a bird and put a Mayan headdress and, and um, clothing on it? And um, it, it, this one's pretty cool. You see it? All right. So that art show just ended. Um, I have art downtown Fairbrain, Nebraska right now. I have about 10 paintings at a very large window that a friend of mine just letting me use. Um, and I also have two paintings up in Lincoln, Nebraska at a Noise Art Gallery where I'm a new member, which is kind of cool. I'm actually a gallery member, you know, it gives me some, some cred. So uh, well, I need to like, uh, explain myself, q and A. I don't know. So you can get to know me. Um, that's my, my ladder over there. And uh, yeah, that, that pillow over there, when my wife uh, pulls in the garage, so she opens the door, it doesn't smack into the wall. But that's been here since we bought the house over 20 years ago. So we live in Fairbury, Nebraska. I'm a registered nurse for about 21 years. Um, if you watch my other videos, I went to art school in Kearney, Nebraska. Um, I never made a career out of art. Um, if, you listen, if you watch my videos, you hear a lot of my music. Uh, I was going to bring my guitar out here, but I play guitar, I play bass, I play a little bit of keyboards, and I, I write and record my own music. So all the music you're hearing on my videos, I wrote it, I recorded it in my basement. I haven't written and recorded anything new probably in 15 years. Um, I don't have a gear anymore, my amps are all dead, but I still have a pretty good um, catalog of music. I, I tend to go into these old jags where I'll write and record music for two years and I'll quit. Uh, during COVID, I did a bunch of acoustic stuff. Um, then I'll write books. I've written like 20 novels. I quit just, one day. I just quit doing it. Um, 20 years ago, maybe 25, I did a, had a painting binge. Uh, I painted for two years. One day I just quit. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny how I do that. I, I, I cycle back into this, back into that. Right now, I'm on my uh, 18th month of painting again, and. Um, I'm expecting somewhere during the winter season to just up and quit. I mean, if I don't see anything coming out of, out of this, I don't see any point in continuing. I'm not selling anything. I've never sold a painting in my life. I'm, I'm starting a YouTube channel, which obviously if you're watching this, you're, you're noticing that. And my YouTube channel is going nowhere. Uh, I mean, my painting view videos normally get less than 100 views. Videos like this where I talk to the camera, I'm lucky to get five. So if you're watching this, thank you very much. But I want to tell a story. I need to tell a story. I've been thinking about this for, oh, I got a haircut today. Let's catalog that. That didn't look very good. Um, I'm 57 years old. I still got most of my hair. Anyway, so this, this goes back to when I was in high school. This is a good story. It has to do with the two kinds of art that I don't care for, one of which was abstract, which someday I'll talk about. It's, that's just gonna piss some people off because I, I know there's abstract artists out there who think I'm nuts if I don't like abstract art, but I just don't think there's much art in it. I think it's more for decorating your, your 
living room, matching your carpet, matching your couch. It's couch paintings. Anyway, so my other kind of art that I don't care for is super realistic art. And I see this on Instagram, I see it all over the place. These people who spend 100 hours painting an eyeball, and you can see every eyelash is done perfectly. And you can see every pore of the skin is done perfectly. Those people have a lot of skill, skill in their uh, ability to paint, uh, to mimic, to copy. They're like human copying machines. I don't see anything artistic about it. If you don't change it up, make it your own, do something artistic with it, you're just a Xerox machine. So this goes back to my story. 1980 something, I was probably in high school. I was at the Sheldon Art Gallery in Lincoln, Nebraska, on the University of Nebraska Lincoln campus. And I was doing a tour of the art gallery because I love art. And I came across this painting. At the time, my jaw hit the floor because what it was, it was a picture of a diner the back counter where they keep all the pots and pans in the ice cream machine, all the, all the metal objects. And this artist had painted all the silver and glass and spoons, like a malt machine, and it was like a photograph, a flipping photograph. And I was like, I don't know, 17, 16 years old at the time. And I thought that was absolutely amazing. This guy was, or a gal was able to reproduce this. And I've always wanted to be able to do metal and reflective objects myself. And I, I put a lot of that into my own paintings. But looking back at it now, at four, uh, how old am I, 57? I look back at that now the same way as I look at it, this, these people on Instagram now. That person was very good at looking at a photograph, because I'm sure it was a photograph, and, and picking out the, the colors and making it look the exact same as the photograph. Back then, I thought it was artistic, I guess, because I was young, I didn't know any better, but realistically, this person just had a, lot, a very high skill level of being able to pick out the colors and mimic it, mimicking it, mimicking it on canvas. Um, and, and I know that kind of stuff impresses people, it really does. My favorite kind of art is impressionism. In my art, I try to be impressionistic. I, I want to see a painting where you can see the brush strokes. You can tell it was painted. It's, they call it painterly. I remember it being at work one time, a long time ago. And they had this painting on the wall. I don't remember who did it. You probably would recognize it. It was, it was a beach scene. And this thing was painted back in the 1800s. I don't know. You walk up to the painting. All you see is splotch, 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 color, 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 color. As you back away from it, it all just gels together into this amazing painting of these people on the beach. And it was all impressionistic. And, and I, I think. To me, I want people to know I'm using a brush. I want them to know I'm mixing my own colors. I want it to be splotchy, you know, but I also want them to see it looks real as well when they back up. Because there's a certain distance you're supposed to observe paintings at. I think it's like six to 12 feet. And uh, if you get closer than that, you're gonna see all, the, all those, the, the brush strokes. But unless you're doing the hyper-realistic stuff, you never see the brush strokes. So, so my opinion on that stuff is, because I like impressionistic work, I want to see how the artist made it. I want it to be artistic. I want it to be painterly. I don't want to see a photograph. I'm a photographer. I do a lot of sports photography. And I, I, I can make a picture if I want with a camera. But if I'm painting, I want to see the brush strokes. I want to see all that stuff, you know? So that's my opinion on that. Abstract art, there is some stuff that I think is, is well done. I do, I do. But I just kind of question, is abstract art for people who can't draw? I don't want to offend anybody, but um, drawing is a stepping stone to me to painting. If you can't draw, what you do is you pour your paint on the floor, mix it around, some alcohol or what else, what else and come up with something that dries and you can put it up on your wall next to your couch. Art is art, there's lots of art, art's different, art, art's different. Oh, I got another story. Art, of all the artistic things out there, this, this is gonna be a long video. Of all the artistic things out there, writing, music, acting, anything like that, art is the only one where people get a free pass. And what I mean by that, you can go to a, a play and tell if an actor is doing a lousy job. You can go to a concert and tell if the musicians suck. But if you ever tell an artist, a drawer or a painter, that their art is bad, forget it, you're toast. 
because art gets a free pass. It's good no matter what, because everybody has their own style. Now, if you're up there playing Stairway to Heaven or some other song, you're plucking on the wrong notes, you don't get that free pass, because you have to play that back just right. If you're acting, and your acting is wrong, you forget your lines, you say something stupid or say it the wrong way, you don't get a free pass. So I don't know why art gets a free pass. It shouldn't. If you're a lousy artist and you suck, then you suck. And, and you know, it, it, uh, somebody like me is afraid to call somebody out and say, you know what, that line wasn't quite right, that color wasn't quite right, your person looks more like an elf than a human being. I mean, I'm not perfect. I just finished a painting this morning of a, of a football player, and I was very unhappy with it. Very unhappy with it, because I'm not very good at human faces. I do a lot of cartooning. I have a cartooning background, but um, that influences my other paint, my painting. So sometimes my realist stuff looks like Bozo the Clown. So that's why I avoid doing that kind of stuff. See, that's just it. I, I'm not going to put out a painting of a face if I can't do it right. Now, I, I don't want that free pass. If it sucks, somebody tell me. You know, that's, that's not good. And that's fine, because just recently I've decided to go back over some of my older paintings that I, I don't really, didn't really like, especially these really huge ones. I have a, I have a problem with on big scale. And just gesso over them. Oh, I sand over them first, because I sprayed them, you know. I get that spray off. And I'm going to repurpose them because those canvases cost me around 30 bucks each. There's no use them sitting in my living room and doing nothing. So I took my football player downtown. I put a 250 on it, and we'll see if anybody uh, wants to buy it. If they don't, I have no problem taking it home. Uh, and uh, I didn't spray this one, so I'll just gesso it again. But that's my deal. I got about, I'm anticipating, it's, it's right now it's uh, August 11th. I got about four more months before I'm done. I'll pack up my paints and just stick it in the corner and I'll, I'll move on to something else. So right now I probably accomplished, oh geez, probably 50 works of art. Hey, if you want to buy one, let me know. I'll sell it to you.